Well, hello guys, and welcome to another episode of Kerbal Space Program. This time we're going to launch this monstrosity of a plane that I have constructed in order to go rescue Handan Kerman, uh, our hero from previous episodes who led the successful rescue mission to the moon. Now, uh, you might wonder why I've built this awful contraption here. Well, the idea um, essentially is to have a very large plane that has room in the cockpit for more than one uh, uh, individual. Um, hopefully, we can use that to actually capture um, hand in. Now, I don't know, I, I've had trouble in the past getting this to successfully launch, but you can see we have a little VTOL element there. Once you get this thing up and going, it's, it's, pretty, um, it's pretty efficient. And we have nice little search lights there as well. So I just want you guys to take a, a good look at that. And we're going to go ahead and put our display back on and raise these gears that are in our way. Uh, basically, the idea is we're going to take this over into the mountains where Handan is currently um, currently hiding. Not really hiding so much as uh, awaiting our rescue. The thought being, of course, that it's better to rescue him. Um, than the other Kerbals because the other ones have all of those supplies um, in there. Oh, don't want to get too low there. Okay, let's pull up. Uh, okay, trying to press the correct buttons. It is kind of tricky to use this. I, I have the hotkeys set up appropriately. Uh, and you can see we have kind of a VTOL element here. It is very tricky to fly this thing though because it's quite heavy with all of the fuel that's in these little these little engines there. But I believe we have just enough lift to um, <laughs> to take off here. So we are we are actually successfully on our, our way to go pick up Handan. We only have one Kerbal uh, in the three person container here. That is uh, Tomfred Kerbin. Uh, the idea being that Handan again can come in and board this ship uh, once we make the lengthy journey to go pick him up. It's only 30 kilometers, but this poor thing can barely can barely go 80 kilometers at its current speed, which is not really quite enough to get there uh, too quickly, so I apologize for that. Um, but I do think it's a pretty impressive build here. Um, this took me, you know, hours to, to come up with, and I don't pretend that it's pretty, but it actually is fairly functional because um, trying to land in the mountains with any plane of any sort is, uh, is fairly difficult. Uh, because there's not a nice flat runway to land on. So what I did is I installed a bunch of parachutes, which you can kind of see lying the size of the craft here. Now, if you're going at a slow enough speed and you have all of these struts enabled, you can actually deploy the parachutes and come to a nice, safe landing on your landing gears, actually, which is pretty uh, pretty impressive, I, I think, uh, that you can get this, you know, really quite large, cumbersome plane to land uh, in a pinpoint area on a mountain range of all places. And this VTOL element of the ship, which can actually, you know, launch um, from from sea still pretty, pretty effectively. I, I didn't do that for the initial takeoff in order to save as much fuel as possible. But that's, it's actually pretty effective for landing again in that tight spot where he is and picking him up and taking him back. Now, Again, that is, uh, you know, kind of excessive. We could actually could just go to the tracking center and pick him up. But because this is the first uh, Kerbal that I've been rescuing uh, off of the surface of Kerbal, I want to show that I am able to actually do this if it was required to, sort of uh, completionistic. So once we do this, we'll have Handan, and then, of course, next episode we'll go try and get um, uh, Firkin number one, Firkin number two, uh, Billy Bobger and uh, Siegfried all from the ocean, but that'll be next episode, which I'm not sure. I'll probably have that come out a bit later than this one, just so I can get a few episodes of other games in in the meanwhile. So there's not much else to, to point out about the ship other than um, kind of the very odd design. <laughs> Certainly, it's uh, it's not stereotypical, but um, I, I like it. It's it's difficult to fly. I have to admit, but if anyone's interested in, in uh, getting a copy of it, I can always try to find some way to give you guys the craft file if you're interested again. Maybe, maybe not, but uh, I think it's a pretty cool, pretty cool build here. That being said though, it's going to probably take uh, a little while to get all the way out there, so I might take a quick pause in the video and cut forward till when we're about maybe mm, 10 kilometers away 
from uh, from our uh, a target here. Okay, so I'll be right back. Thanks. All right, guys, I am back. Uh, we are closing in on our target again. Uh, you can see the lights as we're getting closer to the ground as well. So try to pull up just a little bit to maintain our altitude. Now, uh, this might seem like, you know, uh, eight and a half kilometers might seem a long distance away, but this is where we have to start thinking about how we're going to land. Again, my goal is to use these parachutes to land, but if I were to deploy them right now, that would probably rip the ship apart and possibly rip the wings off. In fact, there's always a risk of that, even, even when I'm going fairly slow. Um, so I do not want that to happen. So we want to get nice and close to our target. Um, and that should be should be effective there. So I'm going to head and lower the landing gear again. Um, you can see on this design again I used basically wheels on the outer edges um, in addition to the main wheels to act sort of as training wheels almost for this to um, prevent crashes essentially um, uh, especially on takeoff and landing on this rugged terrain. Um, I, I have actually managed to success, ooh, excuse me, successfully land this before on such rugged terrain but it is very risky, um, very difficult, and probably not going to get me right where I want to be to catch Handan Kerbin. So we're probably going to use the parachutes to land if we, um, if we use anything like that. That being said, we'll probably try to get as slow and close to the ground as possible. Um, because again, the slower we're going when we do deploy those um, uh, parachutes, sorry, words again failing me, um, when we, the closer we are to landing when we deploy those parachutes the better off we will be in terms of likelihood of the ship holding together because otherwise we'll be sending out a whole new <laughs> rescue team to get these guys as well um, which would not be um, well it would be mm, suboptimal it would not be not be what we we're going for here so just to pull up lightly okay and I believe hand in is right over the crest of this hill right here and you can see we're gliding pretty pretty low over the surface so I'm going to head and cut down our engines just a little bit just to get our uh, speed down slightly and the idea being that we'll be able to pull back slow down quite a bit and then hopefully land very close to hand and again he can walk a very long distance it's not a, a big issue there I mean 2.3 kilometers honestly is far enough for hand and to walk if he had to it would basically be me well I mean the whole 30 kilometers he could theoretically walk it would just be uh, unpleasant. So we're kind of coming in here, again slowing down, and this is going to be a definitely a um, an interesting landing to say the least. So I'm going to pull up here though because I am coming in a little bit closer than I would like to, and we might have to pull the uh, coming pretty darn close. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and cut the engines, pull back quite a bit, that'll give us some lift and also slow us down, and it's, and there's Handan right there, we're going to pass over him, try and turn a little bit, and we're going to hit the brakes now, and there you go, we have, uh, we have everything, all of these parachutes have taken off, now we are a little bit crooked here, that should be okay. We might have to um, activate this one engine and very gently throttle up to get ourselves. Uh, let me shut down that engine again. We don't want to land directly on our nose. We don't want to land directly on our back either. So by putting on this jet engine. That should push us a little bit forward and tilt us down some. And we'll cut that now. We'll hit our brakes as well. And we have we have made a successful touchdown. I'm actually very pleased with that. We landed, you know, 100 meters away from our target, just waiting for our engine to shut down. And there we go. Okay, guys. Well, uh, I'm going to go on over to hand in here. Actually, I am going to quick save, though, too. Um, after all, after all that work getting him, uh, getting out here, we don't want to, uh, nope, oh, wrong person there. So hand in. is going to walk over to our, our ship there again. Things are going very, very slowly. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do some time acceleration there. I forgot how incredibly slowly Kerbals walk. It's, uh, 
<laughs> it's pretty painful actually. So I might go ahead and cut uh, here. Um, is that moving forward? In the past I've had an issue with a plane actually continuing to move after I've parked it and I can't tell if it's moving or not or if that's just my imagination. Let me uh, look at this right here. Okay, Definitely not moving there except for maybe under time acceleration because it seems almost as, almost as if the plane is moving away from us very very slowly but we are getting closer to it so okay <laughs> slowly catching up with it um, I think I am going to cut here um, once I get to the plane I'm going to repack the chutes with um, hand Dan and then I'll join back up when we get there okay I'll be right back guys alright guys I am back and we have repacked all of our parachutes hopefully that will work I have a little bit of fear that perhaps the parachutes will uh, will all just deploy as soon as we take off that could be an issue um, of course uh, let's try and get hand Dan on here <laughs> it's not the easiest thing for him to navigate onto the crew hatch so go ahead and grab that and board we now have Hand Dan and Th Tomford uh, aboard. So, uh, hmm. I'm afraid about, about that. So we're gonna go ahead and start our engines, drop our brakes, and we're gonna try to get some forward momentum before we hit these. Um, and tap the brakes again. Sometimes the brakes aren't the most responsive. Uh, things. I did notice, by the way, apparently time acceleration actually... Oh boy. Okay. And there we go. We're going to go ahead and burn off the rest of our VTOL fuel here. Well, sort of pseudo VTOL. Um, again, because that's not much useful. It looks like one of our... Um, just a single one of our parachutes... Oh, oh, oh boy. Okay, one of our parachutes had some problems and the rest were fine. So we're gonna go ahead and try and turn around here and also pull up our gears. Might not be the most necessary thing, but we did, again, get our nice VTOL uh, launch here. I'm gonna put the, uh, okay, put KSC as our target and try and, uh, try and get home. Now we are gonna want to, again, approach uh, KSC from uh, well, this is uh, it's much more um, responsive when uh, <laughs> it's much more responsive when there's no fuel in there, which is good um, to a degree, but can also be a bit of an issue there. Um, you know, you can see we're going much much faster without being weighted down by all that fuel. Um, yeah, much much faster this way. Um, the catch being, of course, that it throws off our, our balance a little bit here. But I'm pretty pleased with this, though. I think we are making good progress towards getting getting home. We have our emergency parachutes, if absolutely necessary. Um, and I have those actually quick uh, quick tabs to um, one of the hotkeys. So hopefully, if that doesn't work out, we'll be okay. Uh, it should be... We should be able to land without too much problem, but we're going to want to launch these parachutes as we're landing because again you've, you've seen this uh this craft is fairly um uh what's the word well it's it's uh temperamental to say the least so I, I overall though am pretty happy oh i forgot to put the ladder back up well let's go ahead and retract that uh it doesn't really affect our balance or aerodynamics or anything like that but just aesthetically it's nice to to not have <laughs> that just uh sticking out there after all so, um, so yeah, guys, I am going to use a different, um, a different method to pick up the other guys because, again, I, I could, you know, launch two of these, land them down in the ocean. I think this will take off from the ocean with a VTOL um, and, you know, have one of three in here, put two in each time. And that would work. Um, but I have a, a bit more of an elaborate uh, plan that I think um, should be interesting. It uh, might be difficult and may or may not work, but I'll do that next episode whenever that comes out. Um, so my current plan is something along the lines of, uh, well, I don't want to spoil it too much, but it's, it's sort of reminiscent of an intercontinental ballistic missile as far as how the um, how I get the rescue craft into location. Um, so not quite as elegant as this, uh, well, 
I don't know if you can really call this plane elegant per se. Um, maybe technical, very technical after all. There's quite a few, very high part count here. Um, yeah, very high part count. So yeah, we are fast approaching KSC though. Uh, I would normally do a cut here to get rid of the boring, you know, interspersed parts, but we've essentially gone far enough that we're uh, gonna be approaching the run, run, runway fairly soon. Sorry, I have uh, been having problems enunciating today with uh, some of those words. And I believe our target is fairly close to the runway there. Let me zoom out and see if we can't get a good look at that. I gotta be careful here. So, I'm gonna target that because that's pretty close. You can see the start of the runway right there. So we're gonna go ahead and move a little bit past our target. I'm gonna try to head, aim, look directly east and once we're getting close to our target, we can start to make our turn. Uh, again, trying to, trying to hit this as close as possible. And I do love flying these uh, space planes in this game, especially now that, uh, especially now, uh, what's the word? Now that the uh, SAS targeting um, autopilot type things um, have been sort of tweaked to be more uh, efficient here. Okay, so we're gonna come in pretty quick, so I'm gonna actually slow down some of our engines and try to pull up a little bit here. Again, we wanna hit the runway as, uh, as flat and close as possible since it is kind of elevated. We don't wanna come in too quickly um, but hopefully we can get a nice safe landing here. Uh, if we do deploy the parachutes, which I'll, I'll probably do when we're getting close to landing, just to, just to be safe. Um, if we do deploy those though, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. I, I am second guessing my decision to land on the one runway though, because honestly it might be more efficient. Oh, did you hear that? Okay. Okay, and we're gonna touch down. Okay, maybe go touch down. Oh boy. Okay, I got a little antsy and pulled the uh, pulled the trigger too soon on the uh, parachutes, but we we made it, guys. Um, maybe not the most graceful landing. Uh, I got a little scared there and thought we were going to crash, and so I just hit the uh, hit the hot key to <laughs> pull the pull all the um, parachutes. As you can see, that's what happens when you deploy the parachutes going at full speed. Um, the ship essentially disintegrates, but both Handan, uh, fortunately, uh, and uh, Tomfred are both uh, safe and sound outside of the wreckage of their vehicle. They probably experienced some pretty serious G-forces there, but they are home, which means we can recover them uh, as well as the debris from the surface. Now, of course, you could do that with a tracking center from anywhere in Kerbal, but I wanted to prove that we could get them home uh, safe and sound. Um, and if you guys want, I can try and land this thing uh, to prove that it is landable on another episode, because it is. Uh, I just got a little antsy, because after all, after all the work of going out there and picking them up and getting home, I didn't want to uh, lose their lives in a bad landing, even if it would land well nine times out of ten. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Feel free to leave a comment uh, and any feedback you have for me. And until next time, have a great day. Later.